I suspect it's going to be very difficult to uh, say anything that's not already been said during the course of the, the day. So what I'm hoping to, uh, I'm going to do is not contradict things that have been said uh, uh, early in the day, but rather try and re reinforce uh, uh, some of the messages and reinforce them really from the pers uh, perspective of both being uh, clearly the leader of Manchester City Council, but also... Uh, Vice Chair of the Association of Greater Manchester Authorities Executive and the combined authority, because it has been said, this is a Greater Manchester plan, not simply a City of Manchester, uh, City of Manchester uh, plan. You, you already know about the government's proposals for creating enterprise zones, and you'll know that there are a relatively small number of places where it was possible to uh, identify enterprise zones almost at the time they were being being uh, announced and airport city being one of the four that was uh, announced right at the uh, right at the outset uh, that wasn't uh, a, an accident uh, it might have been an accident in the other three locations but it certainly wasn't uh, 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 wasn't here because there are a lot, a lot of work had gone on previously first of all to develop uh, the criteria by which Greater Manchester could assess the economic potential of a whole range of sites and a whole range of uh, areas, and using that assessment framework to be able to say that if we were uh, in a position, and this is a simple question, to generate business rates sooner rather than later, which is the site which would generate as potentially the most business rates in the quickest possible of time to be able to recirculate within the Greater Manchester economy. That's a sort of gross oversimplification because we also looked at job creation and a whole range of uh, uh, <coughs> other things. But it was uh, Airport City, uh, there were other competitor sites, but Airport City actually quite a long way ahead of uh, the nearest other potential site about that ability to get off the ground very, very uh, quickly, a planning framework virtually uh, in, in place uh, where there are potential end users already identifiable that could give us some confidence about that job creation and business rate generation over a very short, uh, very short time, uh, time scale. And, and that's really for me the probably two big pluses uh, uh, of uh, the enterprise zone concept as it now is, very, very different to the one that we had in the, uh, 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 the past. It's first of all that it will allow us to do certain things, in particular to uh, advance plans that we already have for next generation access, for being able to get uh, 100 meg plus uh, digital connectivity to particular key lo locations. We've already done it with the Sharp project in North Manchester. Media City's already uh, got it. We need a number of other locations to get that, and this, this will be one of them. But it's also that ability, uh, instead of sending all our business rates off to the Treasury uh, to give, give away in, uh, elsewhere, to be able to keep uh, business rates and to be able to reinvest them in the, uh, in the Greater Manchester economy. Uh, it's also, I think, uh, a site that makes it easier to prevent uh, uh, displacement. I think something that was be, uh, being discussed in, certainly indirectly in the questioning as I was uh, 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 com coming in. Um, now, there, there are aspects of logistics that Tim was talking about that are very suited to uh, near airport site. There are, uh, 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 there are examples of where logistics could be far better located elsewhere within Greater Manchester and where they'll be far better able be located elsewhere, we want to locate them uh, elsewhere. And actually, the, the planning framework we can put in place for Airport City, and by and large, the land ownership of much of Airport City allows us to make sure that we get the right sorts of industries, the ones that we want here, that need to be here at this site, and that we don't displace development that would ta take place and ought to take place elsewhere within uh, Greater Manchester. So I think how do we get to, to this point? And I, I think this is uh, a factor in how we take it forward. I, I think there is a recognition, certainly about uh, among civil servants and some ministers, uh, uh, about really the maturity of uh, 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 Greater Manchester. Uh, sometimes it actually doesn't help our case in that uh, uh, I think they believe we're a lot more sorted than we actually are uh, uh, a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the time. But what we do have is a, a clear strategy and that strategy is underpinned by robust understanding of the drivers of our economy. And we have strong and joined-up leadership 
across the public and private sector. And it's not just the uh, combined authority coming into being. It's not just the local enterprise partnership coming in, into being. This is something that already exists. And if you look at the agencies like the New Economy, like Marketing Manchester, uh, like Midas, uh, like Manchester Solutions, these are public-private partnerships that, are, that have been working together uh, for a long time in a common uh, framework. Most recently, that framework has been underpinned by the Manchester Ind Independent Economic uh, Review. Uh, there has been nothing like, been like nothing like it previously. There's been nothing like it since. Although I know other locations are now attempting to do a similar thing because they see the strength of that approach of taking an independent review to your economy. So it's no longer well. They would say that, wouldn't they? It's getting people from outside that have global status to be delivering messages, and in some cases. Uh, messages that we might have preferred not to have heard because although the Independent Economic Review identified Manchester as the area with the biggest growth potential in this country outside uh, London and the South East and again by, uh, by some way it also identified weaknesses for example the weakness of international trade that we're going to have to address if we're going to realise that uh, uh, potential weaknesses that relate very directly uh, to some of the things that Airport City will uh, will address. It's building on strengths, yes, but it's also uh, addressing weaknesses. The uh, strategy has twin objectives to grow the economy, but also, and that's the question we've got there, to ensure that more of our people benefit from that growth in the uh, economy as, as well. And we're going to do that by building on existing economic assets and our particular strengths in advanced manufacturing, life sciences, Medipark, creative and digital media, and the financial and business services sector. Our assets also include a, a strong infrastructure, one that we are uh, investing in very, very heavily, and uh, light rail, which will be coming to Withenshaw by 20, uh, 2016, be running just at down the back, uh, uh, back, back there <coughs> is clearly an example of major investment, about £2 billion currently going into light rail within the, the city, uh, lobbying heavily and successfully for improvements in the uh, heavy rail uh, network, and again, the big example is the what was called the Manchester Hub, now the uh, Northern Hub, and a key element of that transport infrastructure critical component is Manchester Airport. Uh, we've long recognised the importance of the airport to our economic success. It's a key driver of economic growth, not just for the city, the city region, but for the, across the whole of the north of England. And talking earlier, it's about uh, how many jobs are supported directly and indirectly here, uh, how much of our regional income is generated here. And I'm sure you've been reminded many times that Manchester Airport is the main international <coughs> gateway to the uh, gateway to the north. I think the airport city concept takes this to uh, another level. It's creating a new business destination that adds rather than detracts from the rest of the conurbation by attracting and growing new businesses where airport proximity is a significant uh, factor. I was interested in the discussion about uh, Medipark within this context and will Medipark be in or out of the uh, en enterprise zone and what difference does it, uh, does, does it make? Well, Medipark, the, the key development there, it will be about proximity to the hospital that is the, uh, uh, the key factor there, not proximity to, uh, to, to the airport. Uh, perhaps a parallel example a bit further away would be uh, Manchester Science Park. There are well advanced plans to uh, develop and grow <coughs> Manchester Science Park. It is the proximity to the two universities that will support the develop development uh, there. So uh, airport city shouldn't be seen uh, in conflict or in competition with other key developments elsewhere within the Greater Manchester conurbation because airport city will succeed because of key success uh, uh, aspects that aren't represented in other parts of the uh, conurbation. Other parts of the conurbation have assets that are not represented in, uh, in Manchester Airport. It is those businesses that require international connections, they require uh, in enhanced regional connectivity. There are clearly particular land assets here and there is that aspect of access to Manchester's knowledge, assets <coughs> and business base. But I suppose this is to 
reinforce my point, what would happen if Airport City didn't have enterprise zone uh, uh, status, if we weren't having that conversation? Well, it would still be a key, <coughs> a key driver of the uh, northwest economy. It would still be increasing investment, jobs, productivity and accessibility. It would still be uh, generating significant benefit the, for the northwest economy that would be critical in narrowing the GVA gap and re reducing regional disparity. We'd still be talking about 15,000 jobs over the next 20 years. Uh, we'd still be talking about 20% of uh, Manchester's job growth, 10% of Greater Manchester's job growth being generated, uh, generated here. And we'd still be talking about that uh, £300 annual expenditure and over £600 million by 2030. What the Enterprise Zone gives us that makes it uh, uh, different uh, it's not that it will make any of that happen. That, a lot of that stuff will happen uh, an anyway. What it does, it gives us a chance to accelerate that potential, so to get it to happen quicker than it would have done uh, otherwise. And because we can get it done quicker, to be able to generate cash that we can invest according to a clear assessment framework back into the Greater Manchester uh, e economy. Uh, I think I want to finish with a little bit about uh, uh, leadership and uh, the strength of uh, leadership and partnerships in Greater Manchester, something clearly I've already referred to. But we do now have some unique uh, features. From April the 1st, we established in Manchester uh, the country's first combined, uh, combined authority. It means that for the 10 local authorities, uh, in Greater Manchester, we're no longer a purely voluntary association of local authorities. For economic development, strategic planning, transport, we now operate within a statutory body that has statutory uh, roles. It is, it, it is unique. I often describe it as a bit like Greater London, with the great advantage we haven't got the mayor. And I have to say, with the two mayors that London have had, I'm very glad we haven't got a, uh, uh, got, got a mayor. We, we have a, a structure that can work uh, across Greater Manchester, but unlike London where you have conflict between the Mayor's Office, the Greater London Assembly and the 32 boroughs, uh, here we have a, a, an arrangement where the 10 local authorities in Greater Manchester are all working uh, together on, by and large, a relatively harmonious, uh, harmonious <coughs> ba basis. Uh, it also, because it's a statutory authority, it means it's got proper governance and it has the ability to be an accountable body for national government, European and other, other programmes in the way that the AGMA as a voluntary body could simply not do. We've also, as we said, we've all had business community at the heart of our decision making for a long, uh, long time. Uh, I didn't mention earlier the Business Leadership Council, where we've effectively asked the business community to give us politicians independent advice and for them to be able to commission advice for themselves in order to be able to uh, do that, because we welcome that. And those various bodies that I talked about, uh, bodies like Midas and the New Economy, ever since they were set up, they've had a majority of their board from the private sector and they've been chaired from the uh, private sector. Public sector funded bodies, funded uh, primarily by the local authorities of Greater Manchester, but not to provide a service to the local authorities of Greater Manchester. They have been set up to provide services to business in, in, in Greater Manchester. Quite a unique uh, relationship. And as we go into the world of a local uh, enterprise partnership, it means that we can build on strengths that have been developed, in some cases, over uh, more than a 15-year period of uh, time. I believe it's the strength and leadership of these bodies, a business-led strategy coupled to a democratically accountable body, which have allowed us to seize the opportunity presented by the Enterprise Zone policy and to drive it forward. And it will be, as we go forward, our wider <coughs> partnerships with business that will make Airport City a success. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you very much indeed.